Well, merci Camille, and thank you everyone for joining today. Um, I apologize, I'm actually getting feedback right now, and so I'm just going to take one second to mute myself and see. Okay, I think that that has been corrected. I apologize, it was just getting, um, I was getting my own voice as feedback, and that was making it a bit trickier to hear everyone, or I'll hear myself. All right. As you know, Bill C-10, an act to amend the Broadcasting Act and to make related and consequential amendments to other acts is currently being studied by the Standing Committee of Canadian Heritage and is currently undergoing clause by clause. Cette loi vise à uniformiser les règles du jeu entre les radiodiffuseurs canadiens et les géants du web qui n'ont pas été réglementés pendant trop longtemps et qui devraient contribuer à l'écosystème de la radiodiffusion canadienne you may have seen the Conservative Party of Canada's latest attempt to undermine the implementation of our mandate of a bill stakeholders and Canadians have been asking for. They are falsely accusing us of wanting to regulate free speech online. Their political spin is totally false. Ce que nous voulons, c'est faire en sorte que les grandes entreprises de médias sociaux Lorsqu'elles agissent en tant que diffuseurs, soient soumises aux mêmes règles que les autres diffuseurs. This will not affect user-generated content. Rather, the exclusion of Section 4.1 would ensure that the CRTC has the ability to request, among other regulations, contributions from a platform like YouTube when professional content is uploaded by its users. The committee has already adopted a clause 2.1 in C10 on April 19th, which states that a person who uploads programs is not a broadcasting undertaking for the purposes of the Act. Let me repeat that to be 100% clear. Individuals cannot be considered a broadcaster and cannot be regulated. This bill will not include individuals who post their cat videos. We do not want to regulate your cat videos. The CRTC does not want to regulate your cat videos. This bill isn't about what Canadians do online. It's about what web giants aren't currently doing. It is of utmost importance to the Canadian music community that streamers like YouTube be included in the act, considering that YouTube is the number one service for music streaming. This is something Canadian broadcasters have been doing for decades. And let's face it, it's not fair to not include them. Ne vous méprenez pas. Ce sont plus de 830 millions de dollars d'investissement annuel dans nos productions, notre musique et nos histoires qui sont pris en otage par les conservateurs. Il y a une obstruction délibérée pour retarder l'étude de cet important projet de loi. Plus de retard et jeu politique conduiront en fin de compte à moins d'investissement dans notre secteur, secteur culturel et moins d'opportunités pour les créateurs canadiens. Les conservateurs ont dit en février dernier, bien avant la semaine dernière, qu'ils voteraient contre le projet de loi et qu'ils le jetteraient à la poubelle. Nous ne croyons pas qu'ils s'intéressent vraiment à ce projet de loi Ils veulent seulement retarder les choses, comme le montre leur récente obstruction. The clause by clause work is chronological. More amendments will be tabled and will clarify our government's objectives with Bill C-10. The Conservatives are stopping the committee to introduce those amendments, which would address their concerns and which they are very aware are on the table. We need a, a full bill before doing any charter review which would be moot without a global picture of an updated and improved bill. We look forward to working to move this bill forward. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Madame de Bruton. Operatrice, nous prendrons maintenant les questions. Uh, operator will take questions. Uh, une question, un suivi, one question, one follow-up. Merci. Thank you, merci. The first question, the première question, is from Kieran Nivett from the Toronto Star. A vous la parole. Please go ahead. Hi there. Thanks for taking our questions. Um, the Heritage Minister last week was um, not quite able to articulate his 
his reasons for why this clause in question 4.1 um, was in the original bill in the first place. And I'm wondering if uh, you can offer up an explanation. Yeah. Um, so uh, 4.1 was in there originally because we um, hadn't taken in, into account yet what we got from stakeholders from the music industry in particular afterwards about the role that social media companies specifically um, are playing in um, in acting as broadcasters for professional content. And so um, when that was brought to our attention after the bill was tabled, then we realized that it would be best to actually uh, clarify that if a social media company wishes is, is broadcasting and acting as a broadcaster, like all the other uh, broadcasters that we have out there, then that they should be included. Um, and, and that was something that was was brought to our attention by, like I said, particularly the music industry. I'll see you. Okay, and um, during the hearing today, you spoke a lot about um, future amendments that might address the concerns that have been raised by um, former CRTC officials, opposition MPs, and quite a few experts. I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit more about, um, you know, what may be uh, coming in the pipeline as far as, as those amendments might go. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a, a tricky place for me because um, I can't go into detail about amendments that haven't been moved yet, but I can say that there are amendments that are coming forward um, that are that that will actually help to further clarify and and add the further detail that I think would bring a lot of comfort to people as well. I, we we're dealing with things sequentially as we go through this through this bill through the clause by clause, but when it was put together and thought together about how it would work it was as a whole with these further amendments that are still not yet tabled. So once those further amendments are, are tabled and moved and, and discussed, I think that uh, it will provide a clearer picture of how this bill should be seen as a whole once amended. Thank you, Merci. La prochaine question, the next question is from Janet Silver from iPolitics. I will have the Please go ahead. Thank you. I'm wondering in terms of the timing of all of this, one of the things that uh, the motion that was put forward by the NDP is within 10 days for, and that was, was not completed yet because the, the, the meeting is now postponed, I guess, if you will, until your next meet on Friday, wouldn't it, just in terms of the timing, because everyone agrees that the timing process is really critical, wouldn't it have made some sort of sense to get that through and go through um, the harder motion? And I'm wondering if, if there's there's a lot of concern then from the opposition with regards to ensuring that there are, and, and I, I, I realize this is politics, but to, to deal with that then first and foremost so that you can keep moving and get the process going? Um, so two things. The, the original motion actually sought to um, to actually put a full, a full pause on clause by clause, um, which would introduce considerable delay. Uh, and there is a, a very live discussion, as you will have heard in committee, about the importance of making sure that before we send it to a charter review, if it's going to be an actual meaningful charter review, that the entire bill as amended uh, be put for that charter review, just so that all of the clauses can be considered. Uh, my hope is we now have until Friday uh, to be before we, we meet again at committee and that the members of all of the parties can take that moment, those few days to talk about how we can come up with a solution with that motion so that uh, we can move forward because the most important thing is that we not only get the review to, to provide that comfort, but that we don't slow down going through the clause by clause so that we can actually have the full picture of what this amended bill will look like. Merci. Uh, thank you. Follow-up question? I'm good. Thank you. 
Thank you. Next Merci. Question. La prochaine question est de Catherine Lévesque de la presse canadienne. À vous la parole. Please go ahead. Uh, oui, bonjour, Madame de Bruzen. Um, I, I guess I'll ask my question in English just because I, you know, I, I really want you to have a clear answer as possible. I mean, I understand what you're saying about the Conservatives' attempt to try to, you know, have a, another picture of what's going on. However, I think Canadians do have actual concerns about, you know, free speech, and they're afraid that any governmental intervention or the CRTC, what they could do uh, about regulating the Internet. So I was kind of wondering if you could just explain plainly and simply to everyday Canadians what is this bill supposed to do and what is it going to change for people let's say uploading cat videos on the internet um okay no thank you for that um the the first part is that it should have no impact on a person uploading their cat videos uh, this bill is not about people's user generated posts their their posting their cat videos or or their TikTok videos or whatever else that they're thinking about. This is about professional content. So, and there is a specific exclusion. It has already been passed. It's already in the, the amended bill with that, and it's been agreed upon that user generated posts are excluded. That's already there. And we will be building on further amendments to make that very crystal clear as the bill moves forward. The part that this bill seeks to do is that if a social media company acts like a broadcaster, that they would then be subject to rules akin to a broadcaster, that they would be treated as a broadcaster by the, by the CRTC. That is about them curating professional content. And, and like I mentioned, YouTube is the number one source of music for Canadians. It makes no sense to exclude them when they are in that space of curating professional content to not treat them by the same rules and to, to put them within the Broadcasting Act as we do with radio stations. So th that's really what this comes down to. It's about, reg about regulating web giants and making sure that they contribute to the Canadian system and that they are within the same set of rules when they're acting like a broadcaster as any other broadcaster. But it is not about individual posts. It's not about cat videos. And um, I was kind of wondering if you, I, I don't know if you can answer this, but, um, you know, with the, the heat coming from many people and, you know, it's, it's been actively talked about. CEC 10 is <laughs> provoking a lot of discussions, especially in English Canada. I was kind of wondering if like you're, the, committee, the committee as a whole is feeling maybe the heat from lobbyists, like maybe from the music industry, which is why, from my understanding, you actually did pass that amendment to uh, suppress the 4.1, but also lobbying from, you know, the web giants like YouTube, who obviously, you know, who maybe don't want it pay that extra money. I was kind of wondering if you're feeling that lobbying right now, and that could maybe explain why there's such a heated debate right now. Um, yeah, I can't speak to, to what, what the Conservatives are, are listening to or who they're listening to when, when they're proposing um, all of this and, 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 and raising, raising these, these baseless fears about user-generated content. But for us, um, it's always been the, the same goal from the very beginning, which is to make sure that web giants are paying their fair share um, and are being brought into the same tent as our broadcasters. Thank you. Merci. La prochaine question, next question is from Anya Caradaglia from the National Post. Please go ahead, vous la parole. Yes. Hello. Uh, my apologies if this was already asked. I wasn't able to, to join right at the beginning of the presser. Um, but, you know, having watched last Friday's meeting and this space meeting, the Heritage Committee meeting, it seems like there's been a change in position from you and from the government regarding the charter statement. You, you know, it looked like on Friday you were in support of it. And today you've said we're OK with a charter statement and it's just a matter of working out when the committee is going to send this bill uh, to the justice minister. 
So, you know, when did this uh, change of position happen and, and why? Um, and it's interesting. It's interesting having been at committee to hear what, what you're saying, because I don't believe that there was, in fact, a change. I think that the position has been pretty much the same. And perhaps when the first the motion first came, just trying to think it out that a charter, a charter statement until we have the full bill with all of its amendments just can't be a complete charter statement. We need to see what the bill looks like. Um, as an amended bill from beginning to end before we get that statement. Otherwise, um, it, it's based on only half half the information, and, and that's, that would be an incorrect basis for any legal opinion. In fact, I'm not even sure that um, it would be possible to give a legal opinion without having the full, the full amended act before them. And then more in the specifically in the need of whether there is one. Um, now, now you're okay with sending this to the justice minister, um, but you know before the position was that there's nothing to look at. There's no uh, there's no concerns about free expression here, and now there, there's been a change on the opposition parties, and the government is saying yes, we're okay with sending this for a charter statement. Um, so I, that's the change that I'm talking about. I'm wondering whether there's been a, a change in your view on this. I, I, there's no change on the view that that we're not concerned about about the freedom of expression aspect. It's just if if it provides greater comfort to get the charter review, that, then so be it. Get the charter review. But but I think we have been clear. I I I certainly hope I've been clear since the beginning that I do not have a concern about about this impacting on on freedom of expression. Uh, this was an amendment that was uh, the removal of 4.1 that was supported by the Bloc and by the NDP. And in fact, the Conservatives themselves had proposed an amendment that would have also extended um, extended the coverage of the act to social media companies. It was just differently worded. So in fact, at that point, when when we were looking at Clause 3, which is the 4.1 that everyone's talking about, um, all of the parties had, in fact, proposals um, to to extend that coverage. Okay, operator, last question. Thank you, merci. Last question is from Kevin Gallagher from Nash CTV National News. Please go ahead. Hello, thanks for taking my questions. You, you've said that this... Um, is to apply to professional content creators, but it's my understanding that that's not really defined yet. Can you define what you mean when you say professional content creator? Because I, I know that we keep talking about cat videos. I don't really want to get into that, but you know, it's conceivable that you could upload as a user and get enough hits generated that you do start making money. Does that make you a professional? I'm just curious to see what your definition of it is. At, um, well, so two pieces, I, I'd say we'll, we'll look at what the whole act looks like as a whole, but user-generated content is excluded. It's excluded in 2.1. Uh, it is clearly carved out so that that's not the goal. And we're talking about when a social media company is acting like a broadcaster. It, 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 we, are, we are simply talking about when they are acting like a broadcaster. We're comfortable with having the Broadcasting Act as it has for the past 30 years covering our radio stations and our, our TV broadcasters. Um, and this is just extending it, uh, which is what we said from the very beginning, to cover the web giants so that they are also brought into the same system and we don't, and, and, and playing by the rules. Right, but you didn't, question? yes, thank you. But again, I'm, I'd like you to try and define the difference between a professional content creator and a user generator who's creating content on a social media platform. This seems to be a very key crux here of what you're talking about. And there's quite a thin line for people that do create content on social media platforms. So I'd like you to try and define that for me, please. And I, I guess the part that, that I want to clarify is that the, the bill does not impose any obligations on on the users or people who are uploading, it's on the broadcasters, so it's on the web giants. I, that's a part where I, I I feel that we keep on. I I, I, want, I want to make sure it's it, it's really clear 
this isn't about the person who is uploading. This is about it's about YouTube. It's about it's a, and not just YouTube, but about web giants who are acting like a broadcaster, just like CTV. Um, and and that is is what the goal is, and that is the view of the broadcasting act is always on them, the web giants, on broadcasters, and not on the individuals who are uploading. How are users being protected from being deplatformed by these web giants if well, their content doesn't fit your, the? You already had your follow up, but we. Can, I, I I do uh, think that that's a relevant question, though. But we can follow up by by uh, by writing. Thank you. So this uh, puts an end to the media availability. Um, merci beaucoup et à la prochaine.